Hello, this is Mike again from Fair Repair and first of all I must apologize for my absence. Many of you will have already noticed that I only upload videos irregularly. This is simply because I am currently working on raising a small business. It is still a lot of work and um, until it is ready it will still be a little quiet around me. So again sorry but I promise that you will soon see videos from me again as usual. Okay, so let's talk about how to program uh, the BIOS with an external programmer. This is a motherboard from a Lenovo, uh, from a Fujitsu T904, a really old board and it suffers from bad liquid damage all over the board. Uh, maybe you can already spot some marks. This is the, vo the whole board was full of liquid. However, I managed to clean the board and to repair a few tracks and this board is working. Unfortunately, I don't have the chassis around me with the display, but um, let's uh, try something else. It is already connected to the bench top PSU. And you can observe the consumption. It is on. Blue LED here. One second. I grab the keyboard. Plug it here. And now, when I press the caps lock button, you see the red LED reacts as supposed to be. So this device does the power on self-test successfully. So let's assume something went, something went wrong while updating the BIOS firmware. Let's say the power, the power was cut or don't know anything you can think of. However, the BIOS firmware is corrupt and here are the flash chips. And now we want to reprogram the BIOS. How can we do that? We need a programmer, of course. Yes? Right. This is a cheap CH341A programmer. It cost around, I don't know, $15 at Amazon, for example. Um, you can, of course, also uh, work with other programmers like um, with a programmer like TL866 or RT809F or even a Betronix uh, programmer. But if you don't plan to program more than BIOS, like um, M controllers, for example, or even more weird stuff, when this cheap CH341A programmer is absolutely everything you need. So um, we need the programmer. But how can we connect the chip to the programmer? Well, there are various methods. And, um, and let us clar clarify the cons and the pros. Um, the first, so this programmer usually comes with some small boards like that. And the purpose of this board is that you, that you remove the BIOS chip from the motherboard and to solder it here and then you can simply plug it into the programmer. Yeah, this is the purpose. Here we have the pins here and so you can simply insert it into the programmer. Yeah, first method. Second method is this nice socket here. You can simply, let me grab a part BIOS IC. Here 
hier. Here. So you can simply insert the BIOS IC here and then connect the, so the socket to the programmer. Same way. Same as before. Okay? Second method. The third method is to use a clamp. And this is for a beginner a clear don't. Don't use the clamp. Don't use it. Why? Why am I saying that? This clamp requires that the that the BIOS chip is still present on the board in a circuit where you don't know where it connects to. And also there is a high chance for connection issues when you put the clamp onto the, the IC. This is, these two things are well known issues for reading and writing corrupt dumps. So even if the dump is not already corrupted, there is a high chance you will read out a corrupted dump and delete the healthy dump. Do you understand what's the point? The programming software doesn't get the interferences which will be created through the clamp and through the circuit. And um, it will appear as everything is fine, but it is not. And you won't realize that you are reading a corrupt dump. This is why you should never use the clamp if you don't exactly know how you can minimize the risk of corruption. So once again, don't use the clamp. Don't use it. And I get the irony behind this advice. I get that because uh, you think the clamp is uh, supposed to, to make your job easier, but it does not. It is the opposite, actually. So, have in mind, don't use a clamp. You are only allowed to use a clamp if you, if you know exactly with what, what sort of issues you deal. And um, yeah, how to minimize the risk. Uh, let's talk about that later. What else? The volt mod. Let's talk uh, a few seconds about the volt mod. Um, the CH341A with the black PCB are known to have a design issue. Um, if I remember correct, the data lines will be fed with from 5 volt instead of 3.3 volt, which also can cause issues and in worst case damage the ship or the board if you try to program in circuit. So some smart people found a way to um, step down these voltages, the 5 volts to 3.3 by improving the circuit of the CH341A. Let us check under the microscope. So look here. Can we zoom out? No. Um, basically, you have nothing else to do when to lift the last pin from the PCB and to put a wire to the pin and connect it to pin 2 of U1. This is the first step and the second step is um, to move to solder another wire from U1, pin 4, to, to, pin no, to pin 9 of the big controller. And that's it. That's all. Okay? Um, for detailed instructions, you can look at the YouTube channel of my colleague, um, Adamant IT. 
where he uploaded the video um, is called Volt Modding the CH341A. Um, one second. So this video here. Volt Modding the CH341A mini programmer. LFC278. Okay, so let's go back to our BIOS chips and uh, let's find out which is the main BIOS. We probably have a firmware for the M controller and we have the main BIOS firmware. And let's see. Under the microscope. So let's see what we have here. So here we have the top marking 25Q80, which uh, already means it is a small chip. And here we have this is a 25Q64, so a 8 megabyte IC, which should be our main BIOS. The chip with CG written on it. So this is our concern and uh, now we'll, um, the first thing we will do is to remove it and to make a good backup. So how, how can we save this connector here? I mean it wouldn't be an issue. If, if you damage the connector, but um, yeah, we won't do it right, r correct? So let's try to create less damage as possible. So this is Captain, usual Captain tape, nothing special. And um, This should save the connector from too much heat. So let's remove it. I have idea for less stress. <coughs> so let's lower the melting temperature. One, two, Good. So I've added some low mill solder, so it will be less harmful for the board when we remove the chip. So let's try again. Here we go. Okay. So 
So here's our IC. So what next? Should we program it now? No. I use I use a socket here and for the clamp it would be the same. We have to clean the IC because the flux residue will cause issues while reading and while programming. And as I told, the software will be not aware of the issue. It still in, in worst case, it completes the task and you don't notice anything about the issue. So, let's clean it. Let's get rid of the flux. And now we should be ready. And now we should be ready. So, pin one comes upper left. So, insert it into the programmer. Done. Let's plug it in. Let's plug it into the computer. And let's start the software. So, this is the new programmer software version 2.2.0.7. Two I prefer and I suggest to use this software because the software which is supplied with the programmer is basically garbage and does not support much ICs. So uh, with this software we can, we can press on the detect button and now it already recognized two different ICs. 64 megabits, so 8 megabyte as I told. It is a 3.3 chip and this is an important thing you should pay attention to before even connecting it to the programmer. Because if you are dealing with the 1.8 volt chip, it is a high, there is a high chance you will damage the IC. For a 1.8 volt chip you need something like that. This is a 3.3 to 1.8 volt step down converter and this has to be plugged between the programmer and the flash chip. Okay, so back to our software. Now we have two options. Um, let us take a look under the microscope again. 25Q64FV and the FV variant is not even listed here. However, it is no issue. Um, it's I have tested that and in this cases it doesn't make any difference if you choose the first or the second variant. So let us just choose the first variant, JV. Let's detect again, yes, JV. And now we have nothing else to do than here when to press on read IC. Let's read it. So now the software starts reading.
cool. Success. Let's save the file. And call it T904. Back up. And save. So, do you think we made a good backup? No, we can't be sure because we are still using something similar like a clamp which can cause connection issues. So we have to make sure or in other words to make sure as possible to minimize the risk. Do you remember? Minimize the risk always. So let's remove the chip and connect it again and plug it again into the PC. Let's click on detect again and let us choose BV this time and read it out again. Success. Let's save the file again. This time as T904 back up 2. And now I use a hex editor I use flex hex and now we open the first file back up this file here. And now, now we can here under the search menu click on compare. This is a nice option. And now we will mark the second backup and just simply click on OK. And now it compares the two dumps. And FlexHack says the streams are identical. So we managed to read out the exact same dump two times, which is a 99% proof we did it right. Okay? So the next step would be to source a known good BIOS or um, to know someone who managed, who is able to repair the corrupted BIOS. Um, however, you won't believe, but I have almost no idea about BIOS firmware. It is, it is true. You won't believe, but um, if I have issues with BIOS, I know some people who can help me for that. So um, I do um, usually I do nothing else when to look on my own for known good dumps or um, to let it repair from um, by technicians who are used to that. So let us uh, assume we have sourced a good dump from anywhere from um, bad caps forums for example or a discord community it doesn't matter as long as a dump is marked as known good and from there the process is more or less the same we'll set up our programmer who stay here yeah we will set up a 
set up our programmer as always, plug it in. And now we'll press open instead. And mark our backup, our first backup in this case. So it is opened. Let's detect the IC. Let's Let's choose JV again. And here we can simply click on program IC. You can check some um, options here. I have always checked erase, blank check, write and verify to yeah, stay safe as possible. The verify option is important, but um, yeah, it won't help if there are interferences as I described before. But yeah, the off protect option you can mark too. However, usually the software always asks, asks for off protect uh, in case it is necessary. So let's simply click on program IC. We have to confirm. Now it is erasing. This needs a while. Now it controls whether the eraser was done properly. So this was a success. 
But uh, how do we know we program the BIOS indeed successfully without interferences and similar? For this question, we can do the same as before. Before we even try to power the device on, we simply read out the chip again two times and compare the file with a hex editor. And uh, if the readings are the same, when we should be fine. 99%. You know, we can't be absolutely sure. And before I forget to mention, it is absolutely important to pay attention to the orientation of the IC. You have to always make sure that pin 1 of the IC corresponds with pin 1 of the, of the controller, of course. Pin 1 of the controller Is this one here. Let's go in continuity mode. So, and pin 1 corresponds with pin 2 of our header here. So, pin 2 is pin 1. Okay, so let's plug the adapter again because if in trouble you can always prove this with the multimeter. So pin 2 of the header and pin 1 of the IC. And we do have continuity. Okay? This is important because otherwise the flash will get hot and there is a high chance to damage the flash or the programmer or both. So pay attention to the orientation. So let's add, let us solder the IC back. Here's the same. We have absolutely to pay attention to the orientation. I did and I know the flash has, or has to be orientated this way. Okay? So let's solder it back fast. You see, there are many things to consider. This is good. <coughs> Let's see. Yeah, connector looks still fine. Wonderful. So let's move back to the bench. Carefully. <laughs> so, will it work? Let's see. Power. And it is already on. The fan is spinning. Let's plug the keyboard. And we do have the caps lock LED. Yeah? So it successfully does the post. Agree? Good. 
So, now we successfully read a healthy dump and programmed it successfully back. While we have paid attention to stay safe as possible. This is a very important rule to always stay safe as possible to avoid any question marks while the repair attempt. This is very, very important because otherwise you won't have success with your repairs. Okay? So, if you have questions, please write in the comments. I hope the, the volume control is better this time. I've checked and compared with other videos, um, with the electronics repair channel for, for example. And in my opinion, it is the same volume. So, I don't know. I hope it is good enough and um, yeah. So once again, I'm actually very busy with my small business I want to start. So please be patient. I'll be back soon. Okay. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.